Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today I discuss whether Petya really was ransomware or a wiper. To be honest, after the past two videos, I was hoping not to talk much about Petya 2, at least for the rest of the week, but there's been some recent updates that suggest that Petya may not be the ransomware that it's masquerading as. This new information comes from updated research from Kaspersky beyond their original Petya post, as well as some new information posted by cybersecurity experts at an organization called Comea. In any case, both sets of researchers have spent more time really reverse engineering engineering the Petya malware. At the beginning, most researchers focus on how the malware spreads and what it does on your computer to help protect victims out there. However, these two organizations have spent much more time really looking closely at what Petya technically does on a machine. And they found a number of factors which seem to suggest that the people who made the Petya ransomware never were interested in decrypting victims' files. One of the first giveaways was Kaspersky found that the key that the ransomware gives you actually seems to be randomly generated. That particular key is supposed to be the identifier for the victim. It's what the victim sends the attacker and is theoretically what the attacker is supposed to use so that he knows what he's supposed to give the victim in order to recover that specific victim's files. But according to Kaspersky, that seems to be a randomly generated key that is really meaningless. Furthermore, depending on how it runs, Petya actually can leave multiple ransom notes. One might be a readme document, but the other is actually the screen you see when your master boot record's taken over. Without going into all those details, basically the keys within those two things are totally different, further adding evidence that really the key may not be a real key at all. On top of that, the Comea researchers found a number of other interesting facts. For instance, the code designed to overwrite sectors of the master boot record are pretty much flawed. According to them, it does it in a way that really makes it unrecoverable whatsoever. Finally, one of the other things I didn't mention in my previous videos is there's actually two possible situations where Petya 2 might execute. If the malware itself executes as a low privilege process, it doesn't have full system capability, it actually can't technically uh, overwrite the master boot record in the way it really wants. In that case, it actually reverts back to just encrypting files on your system. It's only when it has full system privileges that it can overwrite the master boot record. I only bring that up because apparently the code does designed to encrypt files is also flawed and produces unrecoverable files. In any case, all this evidence seems to point to the fact that even though it's designed to look like ransomware, Petya 2.0 might be something that uh, we call wiper malware, a malware designed to destroy data on computers simply for a destructive purpose. Now, frankly, it's impossible to grok a malicious author's intention just based on code snippets. You know, theoretically, we can't say for sure whether or not this was just a really stupid ransomware author who screwed up a lot, or if the intention literally was to create fake ransomware, something that looked like ransomware, but was really designed with a destructive intention. According to a lot of the researchers that found it, it could be likely that this particular author wanted this to look like ransomware because they might be nation state actors who really were targeting the Ukraine, wanted to damage them, but wanted the media or other researchers to just think this was plain Jane ransomware. Anyways, all of that is really hypothetical. You can't bring out intention based on code. Nonetheless, there's a lot of evidence to support that this was designed as wiper malware, according to these researchers. Now, as far as protection, this doesn't change anything. All the advice I gave you in the past videos for how to protect yourself from malware like this is all the same. It still tries to spread in the same way, leveraging those leaked NSA SMB exploits. So none of that has changed. That said, this is kind of an interesting industry development. If there really are sophisticated cyber actors out there who are actually doing things like making ransomware as part of their false flag, one of the ways to trick other organizations into thinking that their, their attacks and malware were for one purpose when in reality they're trying to hide something else, that's a pretty big deal. We do know that nation states have been taking part in different types of cyber attacks, and it's somewhat scary to see them continue to elevate this. It really does seem to be very much like a cyber cold war. In any case, I just thought you needed that one last Petya 2.0 update. That's it for today's news. Thanks for watching.